what really I find impressive is that hearing people from different parts of the world and, and how much we're experiencing in common. Uh, the location might be different, the detail might be different, but beyond that, <laughs> there's just such a great deal of, of, of commonality. Welcome to uh, Restructuring and Resistance. So I'll turn it over to uh, Marcus and Guido. So, hello everybody. It's an honor to be here today for us. It's Guido and Marcus. We are both from Berlin, Technical University of Berlin. And in the next 15 minutes, we'll give you a brief, short insight into our analysis about the impact of the transition from school to work of German teenagers and young adults without A-levels. So it's like a slightly different topic. We're not talking about university. But what you will see in the end is very similar results we found out here. Our results are based on interviews with teenagers and young adults in Berlin and official statistical data the German state provides about VT system. To frame our presentation, we'd like to give you a short overview about the German educational system. You see here is the official scheme of the Ministries of Education and Culture. Schooling is obligatory for children from the age of six years old. After primary school, the children in the age of 10 or 11 years are segregated between the school forms gymnasium, which offers uh, directly university access after 12th or 13th grade. Or they are in other school forms, which ends after 9th or 10th grade, in the age of 15, 16 years. We focus on uh, these school leavers. As you might know, the non-academic education is pretty important in Germany compared with other developed capitalist countries. About 50% of school leavers do not have permission to study in university. Even so, there exists a compulsory education up to the age of 18. Those kids who do not attend the gymnasium have to apply after 10th year in companies or for further schooling. You have two possibilities. First, you have a school-based VET, which has rather little importance. And secondly, you have the so-called dual Ausbildung, dual education, means company-based learning with additional schooling. Apprentices spend around 70% of their time in the company and 30% of their time in school during the three years apprenticeship. School leavers don't have a right to an apprenticeship place. They have to compete with others in a market-based procedure. This neoliberal core element of market as social regulatory had to be implemented here. It has a long tradition. So how does this market look like? Since the 1980s, there's a continuously lack of supply apprenticeship positions, while the demand of school leavers who do not study is completely inflexible. The so-called law of supply and demand doesn't create any equilibrium. And how is the German state reacting on this non-working market? To say it's a little insufficient. Instead of forcing the companies to offer more places or creating real qualifying possibilities, around 30% of school leavers without A-levels do not find a qualifying educational opportunity. For them, the states provides substitute non-qualifying courses which aim to improve the teenager's chances to find a real apprenticeship or uh, schooling. In 2003, for the first time, more school leavers entered substitute courses than apprenticeships. Since then, in the last 10 years, the situation got a little better, but only because the number of school leavers dropped. These objective rejections are socially denied and in the public discussions the school leavers themselves are accused of being responsible for this situation. They are called lazy, they are called not being able to work and so on. It is made look like if it is worth the pupils' fault if they don't fulfill the requirement of the companies. I'm talking about the age of 15, 16 years. While in fact the average age starting an apprenticeship is now 20 years, since after substitute course, you apply for a new round. If you don't find, you apply next year, and so on. So, how do the young adults react during the transition from school to work within this climate of accusation?
Um, so based on our interview analysis, we want to present you four results. First, isolation by substitute courses. Second, gradual reduction of expectations of work. Third, restructuring the view of labor. Fourth, compensation by positive social relations. First, those who are hindered to continue their learning career after secondary school lose their school class as a stable social context they had in school, without entering in a new stable context. Not finding an apprenticeship is a shocking moment and often leads to a period of disintegration. They are isolated by a huge variety of short-time substitute courses. Not even experts know how many different offers exist nationwide. Um, different institutions, dropouts, changing classmates and not even knowing uh, what, one, what one will do in the next month is a precarious situation for the youth. The constant experience of frustration and failure influence their own self-esteem in a negative way. They start believing that they just don't have a right to get a good job because of their own personal failures. Um, they start describing themselves as responsible because they were lazy during school and so on. The collective dimension of the fate, being one of thousands who share similar transition experience and social background, meaning poor, working class immigrants and so on, is not articulated by them. Nor is articulated by teachers in school or in the media where a stigmatizing discourse dominates. Second, decent job that offers financial stability is a general expectation of pupils in school. Nothing special but enough to have a family or some status symbols such as their own car or on vacation, go on vacation once a year. Getting isolated by substitute courses, they react with demotivation and absenteeism, often combined with them focusing on their free time activities like going out with friends. As time goes by, they feel a growing social pressure from families, peers, boyfriends, girlfriends, state organizations to find a stable apprenticeship or a job because this is considered necessary reaching adulthood. They start to understand um, that the society, or better, the job market, will not offer them um, will not uh, offer them um, uh, not, uh, a lot of opportunities or only some kind of precarious uh, opportunities. To do something seems to be better than to do nothing. In school they were told finding a job means to find an occupation matching one's interests and abilities. Seeing the perspective of living from the state welfare as a future threat coming nearer, they begin to force themselves to finish uh, to find and finish any qualifying apprenticeship. They gradually lower their expectations of work concerning occupation sector, salary, gender stereotypes, prestige, work qualify, quality, and so on. Third, um, during this transition, they restructure their image of work. In school, as pupils, they named helping others as a general aspect of work. Earning money was rejected as an egoistic motivation. The reality they face in the end is way different. They describe work as time consuming. They have to get up early in the morning and to work late hours. There remains no time to meet their friends, like in school. They suffer from health problems like aging back a permanent headache. The daily labor routine becomes boring and they cannot identify themselves with their work. They mainly find apprenticeship and trades or service sectors. In these sectors, they will face a low income perspective and difficulties to find a fitting occupation, a fact that is worrying them. And interestingly, they generalize the experience as uh, typical for all kinds of work, an assumption that is supported by the parents who work in similar or worse conditions most of the time. Fourth, getting um, to the point when they doing anything is the best way you can wish. Uh, they find another source of satisfaction, which, which can be seen as a resource in the while during work. 
as one told us, uh, quotation, um, nobody has fun while working. You have to create your own amusement with your colleagues, end of um, quotation. Besides this, during the apprenticeship, they expect, uh, they expect real recognition from their colleagues. They want to be seen as part of the team or as human being, accepting their own difficult and precarious situation is re-articulated as reaching adulthood. Giving up an expectation is re-articulated as losing childish, stupid ideas. They have entered the real world, the adult world. So what can we learn from this market-based transition from school to work for the teenagers and young adults with a non-academic educational pathway puts high structural pressure on the pupils with worse rumors <coughs> and difficult family backgrounds. Having difficulties finding an apprenticeship brings them into a precarious situation. This leads to a negative self-image as young working class subjects see their fate as an individual failure, but not as a structural failure, a few which is strengthened by official discourse about personal responsibility in the modern knowledge-based economy. The result of this process is a certain form of um, subordinate <coughs> workers' identity. They are prepared for the growing sector of working poor, or as we could say in Germany, or in the German case, qualified working poor. A considerable part of the German workforce does not work in the field, but in low-income jobs as unskilled workers. While the growing precarious living conditions since the 90s are often interpreted as fate of older workers who do lack the necessary competences for the transition to the brave new world of lifelong learning, we want to stress that this phenomenon is not temporary but a constant fact in our society nowadays. So, what is our conclusion? The experience of a huge part of the teenagers and young adults unveil the ideological character of discourses about the knowledge-based society and the disappearance of working class. First of all, Germany still has highly profitable industries, but there is a growing gap between those who have secured decent jobs as an industrial worker and those who are precarious and unemployed workers on the other hand. The composition of the working class has changed. We still do not understand enough of this change. Working class institutions often still act as if this change hadn't happened. Co-management of unionists to defend the privileges of industrial workers and dropping union memberships are some of the consequences. Even more threatening is the lack of class consciousness. Individuals cannot resist the structural pressure of, education, uh, of the educational system and labor market. For this, you need organizations such as unions. The talk about a meritocratic society where everyone forges his or her own destiny and where the education is the most important resource we have proves itself to be a lie. The answer to this problem cannot be found in pedagogues alone. We only name some possible political attempts which may be worth discussing here today, if you're interested. Create consciousness about the collective dimension and the structural causes of this precarious transition. Name this group as a subject of unionism. Implement a minimum wage, something that in Germany until now does not exist. And fourth, but last, um, last but not least, give every school leaver apprenticeship guarantee. So thank you very much for your attention.